Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And happy 2014, welcome to the new year. And I know there's a lot of photographers out there who have gotten new cameras, new gear, and are new to photography, what with the holiday season behind us now. And with that in mind, we're gonna spend the next few videos and we're gonna get back to basics. However, I'm not going to rehash aperture, shutter speed, and ISO because I already have a whole series of videos on that foundation of photography. So if you want and need that information, I highly urge you to check out this playlist right here. Instead, for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some of the other features on the camera that I often refer to, but I haven't specifically talked about in a video yet. But real quick, before I jump into that, for those of you who have been watching the Dynamic Range series of videos, I'm not quite done with those yet. I'm still going to be covering high dynamic range photography, but that's going to take me a little bit of extra time, so be patient. The HDR videos are coming. Today, we're going to to talk about the camera meter and the camera meter is the camera's brain and as the brain of the camera it's the meter that evaluates the scene that the camera is pointed at and tells you how much light you need for a correctly exposed photo and the meter communicates to us through the exposure indicator on your camera whether the camera shows you the graph like this right here or just gives you numbers like plus one or zero or minus two the exposure indicator is how the camera meter tells tells us if the settings we have chosen will capture the amount of light that the camera wants captured. What we want to understand is how the camera meter decides what amount of light is the correct amount of light to give you a zero exposure reading on the exposure indicator. Now to understand this, we've actually got to step away from the camera for a minute and just talk about brightness. If you watched the dynamic range videos, you'll remember that a digital image has a fixed dynamic range from 0% brightness, which is pure black, to 100% brightness, which is pure white. The camera meter uses that brightness range to calculate the amount of light that it wants for an exposure. See, when your camera is pointed at a scene, the meter is receiving light from that scene. And as it receives that light, it's measuring the brightness of the entire scene. It looks like this. On this photo here, I've marked some of the different brightness values for different areas of the photo. And you'll notice that this photo is in black and white because the camera meter does not see or care about color. It only cares about how bright or how dark something is. So you can see that the B in this shot is about 10% bright and the petals on the flowers are about 90% bright. Parts of the sky are at about 50%, the brighter areas of the sky are at 80%, the tree is at 25%, and parts of the grass are at 30 and other parts are at 35%. Now clearly, I didn't cover the entire photo with every single brightness value in there, but you get the idea. The camera meter measures the brightness for the entire scene, and then it takes all of those brightness values and it averages them. In this case, if we use the values that I measured on this photo, we have eight values that total 340. And when we average that, we get an average of 42.5. 42.5% is the average brightness of the entire scene. And this is a very important number. In fact, this number is the only number that the camera meter actually cares about. Because the goal of the camera meter, the only goal of the camera meter, is for the average brightness of the photo to be 50%. So what the meter does is it looks at the scene that you are photographing and based on your settings, it calculates what the average brightness will be for the resulting photo. In the case of this photo, the settings were 1 1 25th of a second, F10 and ISO 400. And the average brightness of the scene was 83.5%. Now 83.5% bright is much brighter than the 50% that the camera meter wants to get to. So if my settings at 1 1 25th, F10 and ISO 400, the exposure indicator on the camera was reading plus one and two thirds stop. It was telling me it was overexposed by one and two thirds stops. Now when I changed my settings so that the exposure indicator read zero, the settings were 1 500th of a second, F10 and ISO 400. And the resulting photo, as you can see, has an average brightness of 51.3%, which is almost exactly the 50% that the camera aims for. Now what this means is that the camera meter is kind of dumb. 
because the camera meter only has one goal, and that's to get an average brightness of 50% for the final photo. Now, an average brightness of 50% is fine for a scene like this, where you've got a whole range of brightness from pretty bright to pretty dark and lots of ranges in between. Scenes like this are likely to average out at 50%. And the assumption of camera makers is that most people, most of the time, will be taking photos that should average out to about 50%. But just like shooting in auto mode will sometimes give you good results, but lots of times will give you crappy results, relying on the camera meter 100% of the time will sometimes give you good results, but sometimes give you crappy results. And a perfect example of when the camera meter fails you is the photo that we've been looking at. This is the final photo that I took, which, as I mentioned before, was shot at 1 1 25th of a second, F10, and ISO 400, with the exposure indicator telling me that I was overexposing by 1 and 2 3rd stops. Now, I like the way this photo looks, because I wanted the white snow to look bright white. I wanted good color and detail in the flower, and I wanted detail and texture in the snowflakes that were resting on that flower. But a photo like this confuses the camera meter because it is not the typical type of scene that the camera meter expects. The camera meter expects the scene that has a whole range of brightness. But this photo here is almost entirely bright with very few dark areas. And this skews the average brightness way above 50%. So in a case like this, if I listen to the camera meter and I go for that 50% brightness and I set my settings for a zero exposure, my resulting photo looks like this. And we know that snow is not supposed to be dull and dingy and gray. It's supposed to be bright, brilliant, and white. So what this means is that you as a photographer need to know when you can trust your camera meter and when you can't trust your camera meter. Now generally speaking, a scene that has a full range of brightness from dark to bright with a lot of stuff in between, with a scene like that you can trust the camera meter and you can set your settings for a zero exposure and it's probably going to be pretty accurate and give you a good result. Taking a photo of a scene like the one we've been looking at that is predominantly bright with very few dark areas areas, you can't trust the camera meter. Because as we saw, in going for that 50% average brightness, it's going to take all of the bright areas that we want bright and turn them dull and dingy gray. So in a case like this, where most of the scene is bright and you want to preserve those bright areas, you're going to need to overexpose the photo. In my case, I overexposed it by one and two thirds stops. But it's going to vary depending upon what you're actually photographing. And the same thing is true if you're taking a photo of a scene that is predominantly dark. This photo right here, I underexposed by about two stops to preserve the dark areas. If I had gone by what the camera meter told me to do, all the dark areas of this photo would be much brighter than I wanted them to be. Now, it's fairly easy to remember this, but just in case, I created a cheat sheet for you to help you remember when you should ignore the camera meter and what kind of adjustments you should make depending upon what you're taking a photo of. The link to the cheat sheet is down in the description, so just head down there, click the link, and you can download and print that out. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Next week, we've got a critique of the week coming, and after that, we're going to be talking about the different metering modes on your camera, what they do, and how to choose the best one to use. So if you have any questions about how the camera meter works, let me know down in the comments, and while you're down there in the comments, tell me, what did you guys get for Christmas? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you really like this video, do me a favor and share this on Facebook, tweet it out on Twitter, do what you do, but most importantly, get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys next week. Oh shit, I've gone and lost all my color.